In Shrouded's first major update, The Hollow Halls has just been released, bringing with it new dungeons and loot to suit any playstyle, as well as five new build blocks, a selection of new build pieces, and a whole lot more, which I'm going to be covering in this video. And I'll also be showing you my little hobbit hole, which you can see I've built here afterwards. But before we get any further into this, I would like to say a huge thanks does go to Keen, the makers of Enshrouded, for sponsoring this video. So if you haven't played Enshrouded yet, now's your chance. Make sure to click the link to the Steam page in the description and the comments below. Now the largest change in this update are obviously going to be the unique Hollow Hall dungeons. There are currently four playable, all of which are completable solo, but you may want to bring a friend or two if you're not running a max level build, and you'll certainly want the best foods, weapon and armor that you have, and perhaps even a lower level glider than the ghost one because you're gonna need it in the later dungeons. Now inside these dungeons you're going to be facing an onslaught of hollow enemies featuring new enemy types and a new boss creature, the hollow cyclops. The dungeons are large and feature several secrets including their own quest line which unlocks new furniture for your base. Now whilst exploring the dungeons you'll also find chests and legendary crypts which provides the option of dropping the new hollow weapons, which are devastating to the hollow enemies, featuring the sacrilegious steel sword, the veil rift axe, bone scourge mace, mandible crusher, spine chill two-handed axe, the snake spine wand, sinister crescent staff, and also the silver shot bow. At least these are the items that I've come across so far. These are all great against the hollow due to epic and above quality items doing 20% damage bonus to hollow. So you're going to want to use them if you do have them in these dungeons. But if you're lucky enough to find a legendary item, they seem to be considerably more difficult to find in these dungeons, but they do seem to have some incredible bonuses, such as the 5% health leech or 5% mana leech, which is incredibly useful in all situations, not just in these dungeons. As I main ranger, I'm very pleased to say that they've given a buff thanks to the new arrows. We have the bone arrow and also the giant bone arrow. These pierce multiple enemies, allowing you to kill multiple enemies with a single shot, providing ranger builds with a much needed area of effect attack that isn't expensive, like the explosive arrows to produce, allowing us to deal with larger groups of enemies without being overwhelmed. Mages also have a new tier 1 and tier 2 spell called Bone Channel, which allows you to rapid fire bone shards at the enemy, though there doesn't seem to be a way to create an eternal spell option for them just yet, leaving you scrounging the crypts or visiting the new craftsman, the collector, like the ranger, to produce the new items. But don't worry, they are easy and pretty cheap to produce as well, requiring just bones and ectoplasm fragments, which are really easy to come by in the dungeons. Now, speaking of the creepy new crafter, the collector has a new crafting station, the ectoplasm press, as well as a selection of items to craft from food to furniture, and I'm sure we'll also see the items expanded on in the future, giving your base a necromancer vibe. But that doesn't need to be the case if it's not your vibe, as we also have a selection of new items for our bases, such as new growable trees, plant pots, circular windows and doors, which I'll be using later, as well as random clutter and wall decorations. Crafting has also been given a slight improvement, allowing you to grab items from magical storage in the crafting tab, though I was hoping to be able to link a storage chest to a crafting table so that I could chain crafting tables together, such as sending charcoal automatically from a kiln to a smelter or linen to a loom, allowing us to automate our bases. But that's just me. You all know I love automating 
things in my games. Honestly though, I'm quite surprised at how vast the Hollow Halls update is, given it still has plenty more to offer. You'll also find there are new quests that have been added, a considerable performance boost providing a smooth experience at higher frame rates, and if you stumble upon the town of Willow Crush, you'll find it has been completely reworked into a beautiful fortified town developed around the harvesting of the Shroud Elixir. Just be wary of the tombs beneath. This kind of vibe is exactly what I want to build in our village once I get some free time to focus on it again, and I really do love what they've done here. But first, I need to focus on my own little hobbit hole. Obviously, the main focus of this build is going to be the outside, starting with digging out the hill and laying out the rooms. We're then going to add the walls and importantly, the door and the window. That's going to frame the whole build. And I'm then going to cover everything over with dirt and focus on the outside garden area. So you can expect to see some of the new trees being planted here. Now I should also mention there's also been improvements to the user interface when looting, splitting items into stacks is much easier now and items can be crafted in stacks. There's also been a ton of technical improvements along with some fantastic new additions to the gameplay. On top of the new loot, there are also new shields available. Multi-shot has been substantially improved using less ammunition, but also doesn't trigger on special arrows now, making it more viable to use in a ranger build. We can also summon skeleton wisps to fight for us, which helps a lot given enemy pathing has also been improved and probably to the pleasant surprise of a lot of builders, ground fog should no longer appear in our bases. Now, speaking of building, you can see we have five new build blocks available, two being luminescent blocks. So the green one is produced by harvesting slime and then purifying it in the ectoplasm press and the white one from producing a warm white glowing substance from the alchemist. We then have three hollow hall build pieces. The red marble, which can be obtained from red marble fragments, which I believe can only be found in the hollow halls. Then there's the hollow hall blocks, which can be created combining tar and stone. And finally, the ectoplasm block, combining ectoplasm shards with flint. I do believe you need to find these in the hollow halls before you can build them. As you can see, these build pieces are great for giving the collector a comfortably dark themed crypt, along with all the new crypt furniture as well. Of course, hobbits prefer something a little more homely, which is what I'm focusing on now. But if you do like this build, make sure to subscribe as I'll be showing off a tour of my temple competition build very soon. I'm pretty happy with how this hobbit house has turned out though, but I have most definitely saved the best change until last. We can now sit down on chairs and benches and enjoy our builds. Overall though, I think it's fantastic what Keen have provided in this update, just a couple of months after its first release. And it really does excite me knowing we can expect a whole lot more in the future based off of their roadmap, such as more biomes, farmable creatures, weather, and a whole lot more. And I hope they continue to go above and beyond what they've promised like they've done in this update. But guys, thank you so much for watching. And thank you again to Keen for sponsoring this video. If you haven't checked out the game, I highly recommend doing so and clicking the link in the description below. And of course, special thanks does go to all of our supporters on Patreon, most notably our solo clips Patreon Fireflesh, our Lunas, the Calamity, Ben and Star, and our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Papa Snoozy. Until next time, as always. Ciao for now.